Hi, my name is Ryder DeVoe, and today I'm going to be going over the essential gear you need for spearfishing off Southern California. So today we're going to be diving in California, and the water's pretty cold. It's in the high 50s, low 60s, so I'm going to be using a 7 millimeter wetsuit made by Rife. It's warm, really warm. You need it for the springtime white sea bass diving. See the inner lining. To get these wetsuits on, you need to use a type of soap or conditioner mix with water because this the inside's really sticky. So if you don't use that, it will tear the inside of the wetsuit, and you won't, you don't want to rip that. But it uh, it allows for the wetsuit material to sit really nice and tight on your skin, so you can stay warm the longest amount of time. So a lot of typical free dive spearfishing wetsuits are two pieces. So what you would do is put the bottoms on first. You'd slide these on with soap and they'd sit just like that. And then you'd take your, your second piece of wetsuit, you'd soap it up and slide it back on. So you can kind of imagine how that would, that would sit like that. And uh, keeps you really warm, warmer than a one piece surf suit. So this is my weight belt. Divers will use this to put on their waist when you're diving with a wetsuit so you can stay neutral and get onto the surface of the water with the wetsuit on so you don't float back up to the surface. Today I'm going to be diving with a Rife Euro 130. This is, uh, this is usually the gun I'll use for diving white sea bass or yellowtail or dorado off Southern California. This gun is a little bit bigger than most guns that we use inshore in California, but it, uh, it allows for a little extra range and kicking power to punch through bigger fish. Today I have it set up with a reel because I'm going to be diving in the kelp bed so it's easier to swim through, you don't get caught up on everything, and a slip tip. It's good for holding bigger fish. So how this spear gun works is it's powered by these bands and you have to pull each band individually back to the notches for the shaft to fly when you pull the trigger. Uh, there is a safety on these guns but you don't want to rely on that. It's man-made. Just don't point at anything you don't want to hit in case the gun goes off. Today I have this gun set up with a slip tip. It's ideal for shooting white sea bass or bigger fish. It's a detachable spear tip. The fish hits, goes through there, tip falls off and acts like a big barb. So you have a greater chance of landing the fish and less chance of the fish tearing off. I have it rigged with 400 pound monofilament so you can cut it easily with a knife if you need to. So having a good sharp knife is crucial for diving. You never know if you're going to get stuck in a situation where you need to cut yourself out of something or you never know, but good knife is always good to have. Make sure it's sharp. So when free diving, you want to use a mask that's not very high profile. So when you dive down, it's not going to smash into your face very hard or you won't lose a lot of air when you have to put air back into the mask when you get down past like 40 feet. So good low profile mask is key for free diving. A good mask that fits your face. Everyone's face is different, so you want to make sure you find a mask that works for you, and a good snorkel. I want to talk about these fins. Uh, these fins are long and they're used for free diving. These are made out of, I think, composite, like fiberglass, and uh, they allow for extra kicking power and distance in the water when holding your breath because you really need to conserve all the energy you can. So, when free diving, a lot of times you want to use bigger fins. Other than scuba divers, they'll tend to use smaller fins because they don't need to conserve as much energy because they are breathing off a tank. So free diving, you want to use long fins that are smooth and effective so you get the most bang for your buck. Good fin socks are crucial for free diving. You want to make sure they're nice and comfy, keep your feet warm, and also keep your, uh, keep your heels safe from the back of your fins so they don't rub up against them and cause big blisters. So this is a good piece of equipment to have. Gloves are also a nice piece of equipment to have when you're free diving, keeps your hands nice and safe when you're putting them in the gills of a fish. Just make sure they, they're nice and snug, they can keep your hands warm. Also, like I said, when putting your hands in the gills of a fish, when you get it up, it just will protect from the gills tearing your fingers up. So when going offshore for pelagic fish and you're gonna be in the channel, you're gonna wanna use a float line and a float to be visible or you want to stay visible so your boat driver can see you at all times and also you never know what's going to swim by so you want to be prepared no matter what. If a big tuna swims by you could shoot it with a big float and you'll have a better chance of landing it than just a real gun. The float will actually 
be stuck on the surface and the fish will be pulling it and the swell will actually bob it up and down and tire the fish out and then you can kind of work the fish up to the surface with the float line and dispatch of it with your knife quickly. So the gear I showed you here today is what I normally bring when hunting white sea bass in the kelp beds of Southern California. When I'm going offshore, I would definitely bring at least two floats and a bungee and a safety diver to spot me when I'm diving. Always having a good dive buddy is crucial for spearfishing because blacking out is no joke. And um, you're out there to have fun, so you just want to make sure everyone stays safe so you can keep doing it for the rest of your life. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope you find it helpful and uh, I hope you have a good day out on the water soon.